Hi everyone, welcome back to Mr. Gard's Maths class. Today we're going to be working on the topic Introduction to Ratios. Now, ratios are, as it says on the screen, used to show a relationship between two or more things. Examples in real life situations might be in the cooking industry. So when you read a cooking recipe, often it will say two parts sugar to one part flour. I don't know. Or maybe it's three parts of cocoa to two parts of sugar. That's an example where they don't give you a specific measurement, just a ratio comparing two things together. Another one might be when you look at a map. Maps are obviously not drawn to real life size, but instead are drawn to scale. So you might see the map on my left could be one centimeter on the map might re might be relative to a hundred thousand centimeters in real life. And then finally, you have gears on a bike. These two can be in a ratio. So as you need to pedal up, the ratio changes as you want more speed rather than power, the ratio changes again. Now how we actually write a ratio is we need to have it in the correct order. So in supervising a classroom on or a class on an excursion, you need to have a ratio of teachers to students. And the little symbol that we actually use is this colon, the two dots above one another. That is showing a ratio. So in this case, we need a ratio of one teacher to every, let's say, 15 students. Now, it would be a little bit weird if I'd put the numbers around the other way and you needed 15 teachers for every one student. So this is an example where it's really important that you have the ratio around the correct way. Another thing that is really important is simplifying a ratio. That means if there's another, if we come up with another scenario where the ratio is eight whatevers to 24 something else. Now in this case, we can actually simplify this just like we do with fractions. So for every eight, let's say eggs, you need 24 cups of flour. Maybe we don't want to make something that big, but we need to keep the ratio the same. So what we do to one of the numbers, we must do to the other one. So in this case, we can divide both sides by eight, as that's a common factor. So on this side, we then still have the same ratio One, let's call this side the eggs, and this side flour. So for every eight eggs, we need 24, let's say, cups of flour. And then on the other side, we have one egg to every three cups of flour. The ratio remains the same, you just have a different amount. So one more example might be we have oh, let's say thirty insects put into a spider container and that will feed two spiders. This is quite a random example. 
does each spot, well, how can we simplify this? Just like when we were doing fractions, we can divide both sides by, in this case, 2. And therefore, we need 15 insects for every one spider. The same process can work when we have more than two things. You could have the ratio of four to six to 12. The key here is to find a common factor of all three numbers. In this case, all three can be divided by two. And to simplify our ratio, then we get 2 to 3 to 6. The ratio remains the same, but the numbers decrease in size. That's all today from Introduction to Ratios. We'll move on to Simplifying Ratios next time.